Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Recently, ISRO launched the CartoSat 3. The main purpose of this satellite was to capture extremely high resolution images of the Earth from over 510 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. The satellite is powered by two solar panels, which are capable of generating 2000 watts of power. Now, you might think that solar panels can be used in all space satellites. But this is not the case. Only the satellites which are designated to travel to the planets in the inner solar system prefer solar panels. Satellites launched beyond the asteroid belt use a different type of power generation system called the RTG or Radio Isotope Thermoelectric Generator. The main reason for this being that the solar panels do not receive sufficient solar energy beyond the asteroid belt. To compensate for this reduction in solar energy, these satellites will have to carry extra panels, which increases the mass of the satellite. Due to this reason, RTGs are most preferred in deep space missions. A good example of this problem is the Juno satellite, which was sent to Jupiter. Juno used three solar panels with a total surface area of 70 meters square. These panels were able to produce 14 kilowatt of power while orbiting the Earth and only 430 watts of power when orbiting Jupiter. That is a 97% drop in the power generating capacity of the satellite. The RTGs are also used in places where power generator devices cannot be maintained very often and the power requirement is just a few hundred watts or less. It is also desired in places where the power needs to be generated for a very long time. Other than in space, the RTGs are used to power lighthouses and research stations in the Arctic Circle. The working of RTG is as follows. RTGs use radioactive metal as fuel. During decay, the radioactive substance releases heat. The RTGs convert this heat into electricity with the help of a thermoelectric generator. The thermoelectric generators utilize the Seebeck effect to generate electricity. The working of these generators is similar to that of a thermocouple. It is made of an N-type semiconductor and a P-type semiconductor. The two semiconductors are connected together electrically by a metal strip. The Seebeck effect basically enables the conversion of heat energy to a voltage potential. The Seebeck effect is caused due to the movement of charge carriers within the semiconductors. When heat is applied to one side of the semiconductor device, it repels the electrons and holes towards the colder side. This causes a buildup of charges on the cold side. This buildup creates a voltage potential that is directly proportional to the temperature difference across the semiconductors. Due to this potential difference, a flow of the electrons is generated, thus inducing current. It is important that the radioactive material used as fuel in the RTGs release energy at a constant rate for a reasonable amount of time. The radiation from the fuel should be preferably alpha rays as it is easily converted into heat and does no damage to the electrical systems in the satellite. These requirements narrow down the type of fuels that are preferred in the satellites to four radioactive metals. They are plutonium-238, strontium-90, polonium-210, and americium-241. Of these four metals, only plutonium-238 has more preference due to its good half-life of 87.7 years and reasonable power density of 0.57. However, in extremely short duration missions, polonium is used as a fuel due to its extremely high power density. This is due to the extremely short half-life period of polonium. The biggest downside of the RTGs is efficiency. The thermoelectric modules, even though they are extremely reliable and long-lasting, have a very low efficiency of just 5 to 10%. The thermoelectric generators are being used in automobiles also to convert the heat losses from the IC engine into electricity. Although their efficiency is extremely low, it is better to convert some energy than to let it go to waste. Well, that's it guys. Hope you've learned something new today. We'll meet again in the next one. Bye.